All right, everybody, welcome to our public hearing meeting. I wish to acknowledge that this meeting is taking place on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples. Tum Tumewaitin, or Belkara, is home to an ancestral village of the Tsleil-Waututh Nation. We are thankful to conduct our work within their territory. I'll call the public hearing to order at 5.01 p.m. <clears throat> and I will start the procedure for this meeting. And there's a bit of um, introductory and I'm gonna go slowly <clears throat> and go carefully so people have a clear understanding. This public hearing is being held pursuant to section 464 of the Local Government Act to consider and receive submissions regarding the proposed Village of Belcara Zoning Bylaw Number 510-2018 Amendment Bylaw Number 580-2021. <clears throat> All persons present who believe that their interest in property is affected by the proposed bylaw will be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard, make representation, or to present a written submission respecting the matters contained in the proposed bylaw. People who pre-registered are on the speaker's list and will speak first. Put your hand up on the Zoom webinar to join the speaker's list during the public hearing. When called on, please state your full name and address for the record. <clears throat> Members of council may if they wish, ask questions of you following your presentation. The function of council members during the public hearing is to listen to the views of the public. It is not the function of council at this time to debate the merits of the proposed bylaw. After the public hearing has concluded, council may, without further notice, give whatever effect council believes proper to the representations made. Your only opportunity to comment on the proposed bylaw will be during the public hearing, as members of council are not permitted to receive further submissions after the hearing is closed. Everyone will be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard at this hearing. No one will be discouraged or prevented from making their views heard. Written submissions received during the meeting will be available on the website the day following the meeting so that everyone may examine these documents. <clears throat> to maintain order and to ensure everyone has a reasonable opportunity to be heard, the following rules of procedures have been established. A, a speaker's list has been established. If you wish to address the public hearing, please ensure that you place your name on the speaker's list. You may add your name to the list at any time by using the raise hand function on the Zoom webinar. If you are speaking from prepared remarks, please send a copy by email to Chief Administrative Officer L. Dysart at balcara.ca. Please commence your remarks by stating your name and address. If you are speaking on behalf of some other person or organization, please also identify the name of that person or organization you are representing. Each speaker is requested to limit their remarks to no more than five minutes. You will be timed. Subject to putting up your hand to add your name to the speaker's list again. Your comments must be specifically related to the subject of the bylaw and directed to the mayor, and you must not obstruct the public hearing. It is requested that all speakers be civil, respectful of others, and ensure your comments address the specific issue being considered. After everyone on the speaker's list has spoken once, speakers will be allowed one supplementary presentation if they have added their name to the list again you may not present a submission you have already made. 
please observe the rules. And if you have any concerns with the manner in which the public hearing is conducted, please direct your comments to myself, Mayor Ross. And I'm gonna now at this, point, at this point, invite Lorna Dysart to provide information with regard to the public hearing. Lorna, please. Uh, your Worship, the public hearing notice appeared in the Tri-City newspaper and the dates were in accordance with section 466 of the Local Government Act. So that was April 15th and April 22nd, 2021. Two pieces of correspondence have been received in response to the proposed bylaw amendment and the responses were made available on, to the public on the website today. We will now move to the speakers list to address council. Okay, and I would like to invite Don Reed to speak as he has added his name to the speakers list in advance of the meeting. Please provide your full name and address for the record. If there is anyone, okay. And so if you could uh, go ahead, Don. My full name, Donald James Wingrove Reed. I'm 154 Turtle Head Road, Belcara, BC. Uh, I've tried just bringing up points that I've noticed before, but that wasn't very effective. <laughs> so I have made it in the form of questions. So my, I'll read through the questions. I understand uh, council and consultant have copies and uh, I'll wait for the answers after I've read all my questions. So the first one is, what is the rationale for requiring that owners must provide the village with proof of insurance? Your worship, I will yes. need to interrupt on that question yes. because that is not part of the public hearing that be addressed separately. Yeah. Um, it is not uh, related to the public hearing. Yeah, okay. Uh, can I just respond to that? Uh, um, I, the so bylaw I'm, says it's a home-based business. That's bylaw 580. And home-based business is where that says. Is that not to do with the bylaw when the bylaw says something that refers yes, to? You're talking about the insurance, Mr. Reed, and that's not part of the bylaw. So if you'd like to move well, on, I, we can I'll address I'll, that separately. I will say, would somebody explain do you all understand that the bylaw now will require that the business be done entirely within the principal building or accessory building? That is not the zoning bylaw amendment, worship. <clears throat> and so if you'd like to move on to your next question. All right. As a bylaw should trump a policy, why would council take the effort to change the word days tonight in the maximum length? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that is part of this, but I'll confirm with our okay. chief administrative officer. Um, Dan, will you reply to that? Yeah. Yeah, related to um, the asked, tonight, asked discrepancy the between the policy and, and the bylaw, yes, this does deal with the bylaw definition okay. of short term rental accommodation. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, what did that all say? Am I, can I finish my question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we, we addressed the change in the days to nights in the policy, but your bylaw doesn't refer, it says that maximum stay is a month. A month can be 28 days, 29, well, not 29, 30 or 31, but we're days in the policy and in the uh, bylaw, there is no minimum stay either. So my next question is, please. I would like um, our uh, consultant to reply to that, Dan, please. Sure, yeah, maybe it's helpful to address the questions one by one if, if, if that Yeah, works. I think um, that makes sense, thank you. Okay. Yeah, so the, the intent here is to um, add short-term rental accommodation and bed and breakfast to the zoning bylaw as defined uses that, that are defined as, as a type of home-based business use. Uh, so that they can be added as, as uses that the village can regulate <laughs> under the zoning bylaw. Uh, the bulk of the regulation falls under the policy, which makes it easier for council to, it makes it a little bit, um, it, it allows for council to be a little bit more nimble to, to update the policy because it's easier to update than a zoning bylaw. 
Um, so most of the regulations have been kept in the policy, but here we've just uh, created a definition for short-term rental accommodation uh, use. Um, the bylaw does refer to a month as sort of a, a benchmark definition for, for how you understand, how might understand what a, a short-term rental accommodation is in the definition. Uh, I would suggest to council that the, um, the policy clarifies this, uh, this uh, the intent of this use in, in its detailed description of the regulations, which uh, describes 30 nights. Uh, and uh, so while it is somewhat um, a discrepancy in the language used between the zoning bylaw and the policy, I wouldn't, um, I don't think that it would have any material impact on the actual regulation of short-term rental accommodation use in the village. Thank you. Yep. I don't know why you have them different. But... Okay, please explain the difference between a B and a B, a B and B, and a short-term rental without a breakfast being served. And if there is none, what's the reason for the words and quote, quotation mark and breakfast may be served in the definition of a B and B? Yeah, through your worship, I believe in the original iteration of this, we had them as one definition uh, for both. And there, there was a desire from somebody in the community raised to, I understand, to, to define them both separately. So we did that. And uh, in doing so, we, we defined, uh, we did distinguish between the two of them. So uh, short-term rental accommodation, you would uh, rent out your home or a room in your home to one booking, one family or group of people. Uh, bed and breakfast could potentially allow you to rent out if you had two spare rooms in your home, you could rent them out to separate bookings. So each each one could be operated um, uh, separately. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Please explain what is intended by including the quotation mark and end quote option in the and or choice in clauses 210E, F, and G of amending bylaw 580. Yeah, I think the, uh, the intent there is to uh, um, indicate that uh, the regulations would apply to any and all short-term rental <clears throat> breakfast accommodations in the village. Uh, it, it may potentially be um, redundant to include an and and an or, but uh, the way the policy is written, it is clear that you can only have a short-term rental accommodation like bed and breakfast or a bed and breakfast on your property. So uh, while the language could perhaps be perfected, it, it wouldn't impact the regulation of short-term well, rental bed and breakfast. Pardon me, where, where is it clear that it's only one or the other? Uh, in, in the policy. In the policy, but we're talking, isn't doesn't the bylaw trump a policy? Uh, this is a definition in the bylaw, not a, a regulation of how it's how it's uh, regulated or, or uh, how how the village would administer short term rental. So this is a definition, and and perhaps it would be clear to to say or, and and that could be updated in a clerical update by council. Uh, and council will be revisiting uh, the short term regulations in the village a year from now. And so if there were any issues that came up um, because of any sort of uncertainty or ambiguity, we could do housekeeping amendments to uh, correct that. But in the interest of rolling out the policy and, uh, and allowing people to actually start um, operating regulated short-term rental in the village, uh, we've suggested that uh, council implement the policy and the regulations. And, and if there's any um, tweaks that need to be made around some of the uh, phrasing of any of the language or anything like that, that can be done a year from now if we find that any issues come up. And I presume I'm not going to be allowed to ask the last question. Um, Dan? Uh, the last question is around... Number five. Uh, no, no, it's not related to the, to the bylaw, the definitions. Thank you, Don. Dan froze. His screen froze. Whose screen? Oh, okay. We'll spend the money next year. So, we, uh, we've got, is there a way to assist uh, Dan to come back with us? I think he was completed, Your Worship. Oh, okay. I just, oh, okay. I think he's noted as being frozen right now. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, and I think he was completed, but we may want him back on. Okay. So we'll uh, proceed and we've got the uh, next uh, speaker is Brian Hirsch. Uh, my name is Brian Hirsch. I live at uh, 5025 Valcado Bay Road. Uh, as I have communicated to council both verbally and in writing on more than one occasion that my property, of which I am a principal resident, I have a 690 square foot one bedroom, fully furnished carriage house built in 2016 and uh, occupied in the permit given to me in 2017. It has been and continues to be my intent to have the flexibility to rent the carriage house either long term or short term, or in fact, not at all. It's important to me to be on record that I'm disappointed the time and cost that has been spent on this issue of short term rental accommodation and bed and breakfast because I doubt whether there will be no more than a handful of residents who have any interest in pursuing such activities. The time and expense of the village staff and the out-of-pocket costs could have been and should be focused far more on important village matters. My strong preference is to have the council not proceed with the amendment 580, nor I would like to add the final readings and adoption of the associated bylaws 581 and 582 and policy 210. Rather, simply have the same regulations and bylaws governing long-term rentals permitted anywhere in the village and apply it to short-term rental accommodation. Future events or incidents, which are very unlikely, uh, in the village will dictate whether legislation should be enacted sometime in the future. As for the bed and breakfast, provision was made for this service in the existing OCP of 2011. To date, that is 10 years on, no resident has shown interest in bed and breakfast and consequently there's not been the need to introduce legislation. However, as the expression goes, reality prevails. And to all intents and purposes, the short-term rental accommodation of bed and breakfast legislation is at a point of no return. That is, it needs to be enacted. In which case, I support the amendment 580-2021. That is, I support and I quote, this amendment by law to update and introduce definitions related to short-term rental accommodation and bed and breakfast in the zoning bylaw, unquote. As a side note, paragraph 2F of the amending bylaw 580 refers to, and I quote, comply with all provisions of the short-term rental accommodation and bed and breakfast policy, which is policy 210, as may be amended from time to time. To this end, I sent a letter to council dated the 21st of April concerning liability insurance requirements that in my view must be reconsidered. My letter appears in today's regular council meeting. Okay, I just, I just, can I just interrupt you for a second and confirm is uh, with uh, our chief administrative officer is the part that we're now going to consistent with the public hearing? No, it is not your worship. Okay, so um, Brian, I'm gonna, I appreciate your comments. We've heard them before, but they're not um, in line with what we should be discussing right now. More and the letter is on the regular council agenda. Yeah. I understand. I just needed to bring to some of your attention because you've got 134 pages of agenda. I'm sorry, your five okay. minutes is up to your worship. Yeah. So, Brian, I'm, I'm, I hear what you've said, but it's not in line with the part we're in right now of the public hearing. So I'm going to consider you concluded and I note on my time and I appreciate the um, chief administrative officer. I note on my time too, your five minutes is now expired. So thank you, Brian. Okay. And I'll move on to, I see uh, Peter Strzok. Hi, I live at 4575 Belcara Bay Road. And um, I agree with what Brian Hurst has to say about the, um, that if there was a preference, um, I would prefer to just see this entire thing abandoned and just let it, let everything just ride along. And it's too bad so much money and efforts been put in. But if there is a decision to pass this amendment to the bylaw or not pass it, uh, I speak on behalf of my wife, Deborah Strzok, and that we are both in, in support of passing this amendment, if indeed 
you decide to proceed with the bylaw. And so um, this is a sort of a referendum I imagine here, and um, <clears throat> that's all I have to say about it, actually. I, 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 I'll, the only other comment is I believe that there are many benefits to, to the citizens here who are gonna partake for enjoyment of life and for surviving um, their retirement and the number of benefits that will come to the community are more than the negatives. And that's why I am in favor of the amendment. If indeed, you're gonna have a bylaw at all. Okay, and thank you for your comments and I understand you made them on behalf of yourself and on behalf of uh, Deborah Strzok also, correct? That's correct. Okay, so thank you very much and appreciate that. And we will move right now to the next speaker, uh, Don Babineau, Don? If you uh, in, uh, would like to go ahead. Hi there. Hello. Um, I'll make it brief as well. Um, I Address, please. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Five Belcara Bay Road. Um, I just want to say that 100%, uh, I support uh, everything that Brian said. Um, I think it's a... Uh, it's a, a fairly simple matter that's gotten very complex, uh, but nevertheless, I want to support uh, Brian and uh, all the efforts that he's made in trying to push this thing through. And uh, if what it takes is to get this bylaw amendment, uh, then uh, you have my support uh, so that we can proceed with the uh, short-term rentals. Okay. And does that, does that conclude for you, Don? Yep, and that's uh, both for me and my wife, uh, Michelle. Okay, good. Thank you very much. And, and that and would be the same address too, right? Okay. Address, yep. And so yep. I had 67 seconds. I want it noted for the record. It's pretty good, eh? I, I was going to say, I didn't even have to look at the clock, but well done. Okay. Um, so I'm moving down and... Um, I'm seeing... Uh, I'm, Don, you've got your uh, hand still up, but I'm I'm not. Thank you. I'm not seeing uh, any other speakers right now, and so <clears throat> I would like to, uh, <clears throat> at this point, not seeing any other speakers. I will look to. Uh, um, call for speakers, and I'm going to call for three uh, three times to see if there's any additional speakers. All right. So, for the first time, I am calling and asking if there's any other people that would like to speak at this public hearing, and I'm watching for it to come up on the screen, and I'm not seeing anybody else do that. So that's the first time I'm calling for speakers. So I will now call for a second time. Are there any further speakers that would like to speak at this public hearing? I'm not seeing any indication for anyone. So I'm calling for the third and would note it is the final time. I will call for additional speakers to speak at this public hearing. And I see that there, um, I'm seeing none. So at this point, I believe that we are in the position to <clears throat> um, close this public hearing. So I'll just confer with Chief Administrative Officer Lona Dysart. Would you concur with that? Yes, and just the motion first, Your Worship, um, yeah. receive the information. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so would would the motion be that the public hearing regarding Village of Belcare official zoning bylaw 510-218 amendment bylaw be closed? Um, the one that all verbal, written and verbal submissions regarding the Village of Belcare zoning bylaw. Oh, sorry, yep, thank you. That so, one, yeah. yep. Just so being I received for information. Yep, so all that the um, I'll look for a councillor to move the motion. Uh -huh. uh, councillor Clark moving and a seconder, councillor Drake. And it said all written verbal submissions regarding Village of Belcare zoning bylaw number 510 218, amendment bylaw number 580 2021, up to and including April 26, 2021, be received. And a look to the councillors. 
All in favor, raise your hands, aye. And it aye. looks like it is unanimous, I'm calling. All right, and then I would move to the uh, closure that the public hearing regarding Village of Belcare official zoning bylaw number 510-2018, amendment bylaw number 580-2021 be closed. And I'm looking for so moved. a mover, Councillor Wilder, and thank you, Councillor Clark for seconding. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, we will call the question. All in favor, raise your hands. Aye. Aye. And I would declare again that it's unanimous. All right. And, um, and I would just, I would like to note that um, just so everybody, the audience aware and counselors that members of the council, all members, are not permitted to receive further submissions once the public hearing is closed. The public hearing terminated at 5.26 p.m. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. So thank, thank you to everybody that participated and thank you for your comments. Okay.